Hi, I'm Cindy with Earth Science Resources, and today we're speaking with Sheena Kennard. She is a GIS manager at Total. Uh, so I'm Sheena Kennard, and I am a GIS manager at Total for the Mozambique LNG project. Um, so I'm originally from Trinidad and Tobago, uh, but I went to the US to attend college at Florida Atlantic University in the geosciences department, uh, eventually pursuing my bachelor's in geography. And um, that's actually where I met my husband and ended up staying in the US. So I've now been here in the US for I think 16 years. And um, yeah, I, I love to travel. I actually think the best feeling in the world is when you're on an airplane about to land to someplace you've never been before. That's pretty much me in a nutshell. I work as a GIS manager for a liquefied natural gas project for a total oil and gas. Um, as a GIS manager, I am responsible for overseeing a team that's uh, made up of uh, an international team. And we are all located across the world supporting the project in Africa. Um, our day-to-day uh, -day tasks usually include, you know, data collection, data management, um, data organization, and our visualization of that data. So we make uh, paper maps or we also support a web mapping platform. So we try to tie together all of the different data from the project, uh, which could be a planning phase and currently a construction phase so that all of the decision makers can have that information at their fingertips. Um, another big part of a liquefied natural gas project, which is in construction is surveying. So we also uh, try to make clear what the geodetic parameters are. So pretty much that when the surveyors go out there, they are all aware that everybody's using the same system to take their surveys for the project. So there's no confusion and you can have a higher accuracy, you know, when you're trying to, you know, monitor construction projects or um, dredging kind of operations like that. It's a lot of fun. And uh, I actually have the opportunity usually to go to site and actually witness what it looks like in day-to-day -day action and uh, it's it's amazingly um, a, a fun thing to be able to also see the progress of something that was once like not even there and just you know un, like be responsible for the one who's mapping that timeline and capturing what it looks like on the ground moving forward. So it's been a long curvy road for me to get to where I am today. Uh, so uh, 16 years ago is when I went to college at Florida Atlantic University. I was actually a business major with a minor in hospitality and potentially to be a hospitality major. And I remember having this uh, breakdown one time because I was with uh, my two friends, one of whom is now my husband, but they were both talking about their courses. We were two years into college and one of them, she was studying biochem and she knew she wanted to be a part of cancer research. And then uh, my husband was talking about his degree in geography, how excited he was to use it with uh, GIS. And um, I just remember uh, having an anxiety attack right then and there and you know, bursting into tears because I had no idea what I was going to do with my business degree. I didn't even know why I was doing it. And I um, couldn't really explain what my plans were other than going back to Trinidad. And um, my two friends were able to calm me down and actually give me this kind of sense of reality check too, that, you know, we were two years in, um, I just finished all of my prerequisites. It was actually my decision how I wanted to continue the remainder of my college career. And that was actually the perfect time for me to have that realization because it was within my hands to go talk to the different departments uh, and investigate what it is I would be interested in and, you know, change my course schedule to achieve that. And that's what I did. I actually um, originally wanted to do anthropology, had to uh, talk to the department head, but he was a really great guy. And he pretty much gave me some advice that, you know, if I was already rich and financially established, I could totally do anthropology. But if I needed to make money in life, that anthropology was not for me. <laughs> so I appreciated that advice. And uh, I ended up going to our geosciences department. And because I always loved geography and the study of, space, of places and spaces, and uh, decided to pursue that, not exactly what avenue, but um, I ended up graduating my bachelor's in, in geography, still was able to maintain my minor in hospitality. 
And uh, I remember it was uh, kind of surprising for my family. My mom asked me if I was just planning to teach with that, but um, they don't, you know, being in university, you're also able, luckily, to have access to what the future can potentially hold. And at that time, uh, something relatively new called geographic information systems was first coming out. And there are already articles saying how it was going to be one of the fastest growing industries um, in the US, in the world. So it was something I was willing to pursue. And it was a lot of fun because um, the geoscience department, other than holding our traditional geography, geology, we also got a lot of um, students from other faculties like medicine uh, coming in to learn GIS and learning how to apply it to their fields. So that already spoke to me that it was a very diverse uh, study to follow. And uh, I decided, okay, I felt confident, I'll go with that. So um, after graduating, uh, unfortunately, there was uh, an event that happened called Deep Water Horizon incident, uh, but it did provide an opportunity for people in my field to go out and help with their response to that. So there was a call for anybody who had skills in GIS to uh, go out to, uh, it was Mobile, Alabama, all the way across to New Orleans, which is where all of the support centers were and help map the response. So my husband and I took a leap of faith and decided to pack up all of our stuff and go work for that project. And we helped map the leading edge of the oil, uh, map the response, like where they were uh, monitoring oil slicks coming up on shore, um, where they were placing boom. It was an extremely rewarding experience. It was very tough. It was probably 14 hour to 16 hour days, especially when we were trying to get the well capped but it felt really fulfilling to be a part of something that, you know, you were, we were mapping out what this was doing to the Gulf and helping to the, res the response to it. So that was my first introduction to oil and gas in general and also to emergency response. And I uh, probably did that for about a year. Um, when they capped the well and they started winding down the response to it, I continued with emergency response, um, working for the contracting company, uh, responding to other exercises that might have happened or you know they have drills as well for companies to practice their response um, system and uh, got to travel a lot with that and got to work with first responders and more oil and gas companies and get exposure so um, after doing that for a couple of years uh, I decided to kind of try a little bit of a switch because the hours were a little bit uh, challenging and um, an opportunity presented itself for me to work for oil and gas company in the land department and now this was a big switch to what I was used to, but um, I kind of decided that as long as it's in the GIS realm, any avenue that you pursue could be valuable. And I'm glad that I did. So this was working for an onshore land department for an oil and gas company called Anadarko. And um, I got to work with lawyers and landmen. So mapping leases and contract agreements uh, for oil and gas projects, um, usually around I think, Louisiana and Texas and that area. And um, that was a lot of fun too, because not only was it just mapping polygons, you know, which is more of a repetitive task, but it's still, you know, interesting to learn how different areas have cadastro systems and how their legal agreements work. And a landman's work is interesting because it kind of goes back into history where they go through these titles and they can understand like the history of how this land moved from one person in a family to another. But we also supported like environmental permitting projects. I had a project one time um, where um, we had to map out where the lesser prairie chicken habitats were and overlay that where our current uh, lease and, and contract agreements were to make sure that we you know, were um, abiding by the permitting regulations at that time. So uh, it, it was never just a strict one avenue thing. You got to you know, experience different parts of the industry and, and learn a lot about it in the onshore world. So I did that for a couple of years as well. And um, another opportunity presented itself where a seismic company needed help with their GIS, getting their database and the GIS database system set up. So um, I decided to pursue that uh, briefly. And that was another avenue, still GIS, but very different to what I was doing before because now I was working with um, you know, geologists and uh, the seismic side of data, which was also very new and learning more about GIS databases, so data management rather than data analysis. 
Um, but that in itself too is very interesting because it got me more exposed to the IT side of how things work. And I uh, did that briefly uh, working for a company called Cytel, a really small uh, company that was actually really fun to work for. And um, yeah, just kind of learned uh, how to work their seismic data and get it available and visualized for their client side. So um, I then after a couple of months decided to do another switch, go back to land. <laughs> uh, as you can tell, in my, in my experience, in my opinion, when opportunity strikes, you need to take it because you don't know where it'll, it'll take, it'll, it'll lead you to. So um, I was able to do that again for a couple of months. And then uh, with changes within the company, another opportunity presented itself after about a year where uh, there was an opening in the Gulf of Mexico exploration team as a geotech. And my past experience that I had gathered already working for the Deepwater Horizon, so I already had geographical awareness of the Gulf of Mexico and what the well situation was like there. Um, my past experience with Cytel working in Seismic kind of helped make me become a decent fit for this geotech role. Even though I was not previously a geotech, I had GIS experience, but um, it was considered to be you know, pretty accurate and applicable for what they needed. So I worked with an amazing team where I met Cindy and uh, got to help them with um, the lease sale preparation, uh, mapping prospects on the 2D vis visualization level, um, helping to the ge more geotech roles, which was new to me and I was learning, but you know, uh, like seismic data loading, well data loading, uh, the database organization and maintenance there. And uh, that also was pretty rewarding experience because not only was I doing GIS and contributing that to the team, I was also learning the geotech role as well. Um, so pretty much expanding my, my resume at that point uh, to now create two avenues for me, GIS, and then I can also go through it through a ge geotech role. So worked there for a couple of years as well. And then uh, the latest opportunity that presented itself while I was there was a GIS analyst was needed for a, an upcoming liquefied natural gas project out in Mozambique uh, with Anadarko. So um, that for me, as somebody who is a world traveler, it was an opportunity to uh, be an expat and rotate to Mozambique. And I just could not believe it. <laughs> that it was even uh, not something that I can go for. And uh, I decided to, even though I love the team that I worked with, uh, just really thought that this was a once in a lifetime opportunity and um, decided to go for that. And as an analyst, I, as I explained before, continued doing GIS work with data collection, map making, uh, maintaining a web GIS system, and uh, supporting any of the planning and construction activities for the, the LNG project. And uh, last year is when I got promoted to manager. So I now oversee a team uh, that's located across the world. And uh, that's pretty much where I'm at today. <laughs> that was a long story, but as I said, it was curvy. <laughs> So what would I tell my younger self? Uh, I think I would have saved myself a lot of worry and anxiety if I stopped myself from not doing things because of fear and fear of failure. Um, it took me a while to realize that, because I always used to think when I was younger, that if I didn't already know how to do something, if I wasn't good at something, then I would just be so embarrassed and not do it. And only now do I realize that it actually does not matter if you're good at it. What matters is the effort. So I think fear of failure um, when I was, especially when I was like in my teenage years in high school, uh, you know, I, I definitely stopped myself from pursuing certain avenues. It was only because I actually had a really good friend in high school that I even went and applied for the scholarship for my university in the US. Um, I actually did not think that I could go to university because my mom couldn't afford it. And I had a friend who um, convinced me that I was smart enough to take the SATs and um, at least apply. And even though it was a long shot, she thought I could do it. And she said, what did I have to lose by doing it? Even though I thought 
I would be absolutely devastated if I didn't get this. But I did it and I was able to get a scholarship that uh, paid for my entire education at, at Florida Atlantic University. And then um, when I was at a university, I was also, as I mentioned before, studying business because I thought that's what I was supposed to do. And I also thought it was the safer bet um, because I was limiting myself again with my capabilities, even though I had a love for science and other subjects, I would always rationale like uh, myself out of it. Um, you know, I didn't want to pursue science and medicine because that's a long course of study and you can't afford that. Or, you know, what are you going to do with this degree? So business seemed to be the safest. I had no passion for it, but it's what I was doing. And honestly, if I didn't have the conversations then with my friends at the time, I would have probably pursued business and not been knowing what I did and not really understood that the power was always in my hands to pursue what it is I wanted to do. I just had to actually believe in myself and try it um, and listen to me and actually also to listen to the right people. So make sure you have good friends. That's also really, really important. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty much uh, what I would advise my younger self and anybody else who asks. It's really easy to doubt yourself and stop yourself from doing anything but it really is important because those little steps lead to bigger steps. So I wish I had learned that earlier because who knows where I would have been today if I had started practicing believing myself, you know, from a much younger age. Um, if I had not, I definitely would not have been where I am today. So don't limit yourself. That's, a, that's the takeaway. Sheena, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure to speak with you and catch up with you. Oh, Thanks thank again. You. Thanks, Cindy. This was a lot of fun. Anytime. I'm really happy to do this. And uh, if anybody out there, you know, wants to reach out to me and ask any more questions about pursuing a career in GIS, uh, or interested in geography, or just kind of wants to find out some travel tips and tricks, they can get to me on my LinkedIn. So uh, you can just go ahead and get in touch with me through that. <laughs>